do some forging. Oh, yeah, let's get rid of all our pending prospects first. 1400 profit. Plus a cask of Navardine gemstones. And then a bunch of bronze wood. 2400 profit. Man, that's really good. A condemned experiment. They have a bargain for immaculate souls. Yes, give me all of those. Okay. Enter the Lyceum. <clears throat> Get a port report. Mm, return to the Forge of Souls. I have no reason to speak to the Lamentation of Mists yet. I guess there's no reason to actually enter the Forge yet. Let's consult the spirits of the forge on creating the Clay Conductor's Companion. The son's daughter suggested they could create a new creature from old pieces. <clears throat> the spirits gather in the greatest and most central chambers of the forge to hear of your audience with the son's daughter. The white minister with her wings of canvas and white sapphires is at the heart of the throng. As you finish, there's a sorceress among the gathered host. Excitement? Anticipation? Fear? At last, the white minister steps forward in her robe of starlight on snow. It can be done, she tells you. The clay conductor grinds his teeth. Finally! Oh, I think this just took us to the forge automatically. Smoke rises from the chambers of the forge. The air resounds with hammer upon gemstone. Spirits of air and darkness fly hither and thither, while ministers in red and blue and indigo labor over molds and blueprints written in starshine. Supervising them all is the white minister, who sits upon her lofty throne which circulates the forge at a stately pace. Consult the white minister what is needed to create this companion. The white minister tells you that despite what anatomists believe, the essential building blocks of a person are a body, a heart, a thought, and a voice. The last of those is most important for this task and so will be dealt with at the very end. She has a list of requirements for the rest which she presents to you. The clay conductor grinds his teeth in frustration but nods his head. We will gather these immediately. He pauses and turns to you. At the captain's convenience, of course. Okay, I don't think we have all these things. Condemned experiment, check. Moment of inspiration, check. Caged catch, uh, I think we just... I think I got rid of them all for the prospect, actually. Wait, did I not? Oh no, I have an extra one. Sweet. Yeah, okay, we can do this right now. Provide a body with our condemned experiment. <laughs> The White Minister has very specific requirements. Unfortunately, they do not naturally exist. Well, here's your unnatural body. The White Minister bends low, sheathing the silver blades in her forearms. She takes the condemned experiment from you. It rests in her arms like a child in a cradle. She promises she will give it a purpose it was denied. The conductor nods in satisfaction. One step closer. Soon the air will resound with our voices. Provide a heart. The white minister asked for something that was once wild but is no longer. That new freedom but is now trapped. The white minister lifts the cage delicately, holding the beast within to see into her eyes. With one hand she unlocks the cage. With the other she breaks the beast's neck in a single clean snap. Ugh. She carries its corpse away in stately procession. The clay conductor watches impassively. Soon my companion will have their voice. Provide a mind. A singer without inspiration might become competent but never exceptional. The white minister requires a thought to fill the companion with fire. The white minister leads you into one of the slimmest of the towers and bids you sit over a small furnace for three days and three nights. The air is soon damp with steam and sweat which the white minister gathers in a small iron pot. At last, you're free to go. 
The clay conductor hurries to examine you and is not satisfied until he's certain you have not been diminished. Provide a voice. This choice is irreversible. The white minister tells you that the vessel is ready. It's time for the last component of the companion. The white minister leads you deeper into the forge. The clay conductor barrels ahead of you, almost running into the minister, until a sense of self-preservation stops him short. You emerge into a vault blackened by soot and coal dust. Slivers of gemstones sparkle in the ceiling like stars in the firmament. Your footsteps echo and echo again. In the middle of the vault is a slab of crystal. Upon the slab is a body, the companion. The body on the slab is identical to the clay conductor except in three details. Firstly, it's made of copper. For its resonance, the white minister tells you. Secondly, it looks less abraded than the clay conductor, with long copper eyelashes and smooth metal skin. Thirdly, it's smiling. The clay conductor gazes down upon the form as though entranced. The white minister clasps her wings together. As its progenitors, the voice must be one of yours. Offer my voice or allow the clay conductor to give up his. Your voice is acceptable. This will hurt. <laughs> hmm. The point of this endeavor was to give the conductor a singing partner. To take his voice would be counterproductive. It would be. What? What are the ramifications of giving them my voice, though? Does that mean I can never talk again? I'm just mute at that point? Does that mean I have to have my voice in a jar speaking for me? I, I don't know, but buddy, I got your back. The point of this endeavor was to give the conductor a singing partner. To take his voice would be counterproductive. The clay conductor looks up, once, from the body of his new companion. Thank you. His expression is wistful, almost lost. The white minister fetches her silver spindle. She catches your voice and draws it out like a fisher pulling a salmon from a river. Your gorge rises. You feel like you're choking up everything that you've ever eaten. And then it's over. The white minister shuts your voice in a small box and places it in the hollow of the companion's chest. She fetches a new voice from her collection. A battered, rasping thing. Yours now. Oh, so I do have a voice, but it's just not my voice. A battered, rasping voice that's now mine. Oh, damn. That's gotta be really disconcerting. Just suddenly having an entirely different voice and one that's not very good. Hmm. You've lost five hearts. <laughs> oh, my poor, poor hearts. You have given your voice away for good. Assists the copper companion. With a melodic groan, it lumbers to its feet. A clay choir. When the companion speaks, their voice does not sound like it had when it was yours. But there's an echo of you about it. If you, when you were tired or bored or unwilling. I can manage. The clay conductor doesn't appear to notice. Of course. Come, we must get back to our engine. The companion nods. Then we can practice together. They walk away, the companion trailing slightly behind. The white minister fetches a long silver trumpet with which to inspect your voice, which she measures in the octaves of the Blue Kingdom. When she's finally satisfied, she dismisses you. The, the copper companion lives. So, what, what, do I have another officer, or what did, what exactly did that do? 
clay conductor still just the clay conductor? Like, they haven't changed like other people tend to. We should speak with them. Hmm. I could attempt clay singing. I think that was an option a while ago and I never did it. Moment of inspiration. A cord of chorister nectar, which I thankfully have. Let's... Let's do that. I think that's something from a while ago, so I don't think it's going to be related to the Copper Companion. But, yeah, let's do it. The Clay Conductor wishes a singing partner. You've heard a couple of examples. Perhaps you could give it a try. Mixed with sugar and water, the nectar's taste is almost worth the wrist-wrenching labor. You gargle it just as you saw the Clay Conductor do. Your throat feels as though it has expanded. Your vocal range has widened. You can project further. Your voice is richer and more resonant. The practice is exhausting. Your vocal cords throb with the low notes and trill with the high. You sing of the rock and shale, the arias of quarrying, labor, and the living clay. It's passable, but not there yet. But more practice will surely make perfect. Your singing is horrible. Thanks. <laughs> oh, you can... You can attempt it multiple times? Does your singing get better? Can't do it again, though. I don't have the nectar. Plus, it'd be my last moment of inspiration. Anyway, you have a much better... A much, much better singing partner who also has my voice. So I guess my voice was always kind of pretty good. Right? I mean, it's less about the voice and more about practice and skill. But it is somewhat about the voice. Speak to the clay conductor and his copper companion. They're singing together in the galley to the exasperation of your crew. Two birds in a cage. The clay conductor has brought his urn into the galley. He smiles broadly as he sees you enter. Aren't they a marvel? Their pitch, their vibrato. They can harmonize without me. There's an eerie shiver to hearing your voice emanate deeper than expected from the Copper Companion's sculpted throat. You have contributed to something unique, Captain. The Conductor turns his attention back to his companion and begins to sing once more. Their voices echo in low chorus, singing a hymn to the moving plates of earth, the kiln, the forge, and the clay. They appear content. Hmm, my terror has fallen. The clay conductor and his copper companion continue on your engine for now. They're practicing, they're happy, good. But I don't think this is the end. I think I need to wait and something in, like the clay conductor will probably come to me. As I said, they continue on my engine for now. Yeah, because there's always been, like their name always changes when you finish their story or they disappear in the case of the signs and signals on the high wilderness and omnibus they get replaced with something else and they haven't changed yet speaking of i think i meant to assign this the omnibus instead of you two iron six fails um <coughs> yeah let me check my stats i want to make sure i'm over 75 on veils and on mirrors hmm even with this assigned, giving me plus 10 mirrors, I still don't have 75 mirrors. But I have more than enough veils, so not using the Repentant Devil and losing that plus 6 veils is perfectly fine. Plus, this gives me a bunch of villainy. Two villainy. You're also two villainy, so that's four villainy right there. Hell yeah. And then... Establishment... Villainy. I could... Put the feline eccentric in if I wanted five villainy, if I need that for something. Um, but yeah, I don't want to get rid of the judicious driver because they give me ten iron. And from my stats, I can only lose one iron and still have 50 iron. And that's a kind of important threshold to meet. Like, I think I needed that for my armor. No, that's 75. Do I need it for anything? Fails, mirrors, veils mirrors 
Huh. I guess with the stuff I have right now, I don't actually really need my iron at 50. Yeah, I think it was for the higher tier armor, because I think when I got to 50 iron, that would have allowed me to get armor plates that would give me 20 armor per plate. But instead, I went with that special stuff, the amniotic crew containment sack things. <laughs> from, <coughs> excuse me, from the Royal Society Armory. And these are just veils. Hmm. Well, now I'm rethinking things. Because, let's see, I have 68, so 5, 6, 7, I need 7 more mirrors. Can I get 7 more mirrors by just getting rid of the plus 10 iron? I mean, no, I can get 6 more mirrors, but there's no point in getting almost close to that threshold. I'll just leave it where it is right now. Let's go back into the Lyceum, because I think there's more I want to do with the forge. Mm, yeah, let's return to the forge. I don't want to forge a companion. I don't think. No, um, but I do want to make a scribe spinster because the uh, Lamentation of Mists wanted me to, and I want their gratitude. I want to help them. They've helped me. So the only way to get in is with a testament of the feather. The towers of the forge once more quake with purpose. Okay. So even if I leave here, I still keep all of the aspects that I had. Yeah, these are all the different things I can craft, and these are all the things I can give them that will give me aspects. So basically convert these into crafting ingredients. So let's just convert everything, right? And then see what we can make. Entreat the Red Ministers for an aspect of Incarnadine. The forged venture tells you they hoard the properties of vitality, wanderlust, and loathing. They appreciate poor quality souls for their collection. The singing ministers cease their choir and sheave their serrated wings of brittle glass. The ministers move from their misery cords? Ziri cords? They clutch their polished abacuses and their thin silver tools of measuring and binding. They examine your offering carefully, their red masks rendering them inscrutable. Finally, a nod runs through them, like a tide over a shore. Your gift is spirited away. Aspect of Incarnadine. And also one Caprices of the Forge? What does that mean? Entreat the sisters in green and gold for an aspect of Verdance. They were educated by the Regents of the Reach once, the Venturer whispers, before coming to the Forge. They know the secrets of longevity and expansion. Sticks Bronzewood. I have two Bronzewood, so I can do this twice. The sisters take you to their chamber, which flickers with correspondence. It singes their long gowns of moss and marsh, but the sisters pay it no heed. The youngest, whose dress is the color of sunlight drowned in a mire, smiles with all seven of her eyes. They examine the quality of your offering, the rings and the bronze wood, the smaller plants and fungus still attached to the chunk of tree. They whisper in the ruined languages of the reach. At last they turn and smile as one. Your gift is acceptable. Now I've gained two caprices of the forge. Well, let's do that again. And treat the principalities of Chalcedon for an aspect of the hourglass. I could do this four times. I don't know if I want to do it four times. They were once servants of the King of Hours, the venturer informs you. They helped guide the Graven of the White Well across the heavens and remained at the Sapphire King's court. Sand runs through the Principality's hourglass frames and they hold chimes in their hands. They use these to sift your gift. Their expressions remain unchanging, but after many silent moments, the eldest of their numbers begins to sound a single doleful bell. Your gift is accepted. Okay, can I make a scribe spinster? What am I missing? Aspect of dominion. Oh, oh, there's another one left to make. Panes of stained glass. 
and treat the thrones for an aspect of dominion. The thrones have jurisdiction over the aspects of dominion, the principles of rulership, the venturer tells you. This was their reward from the king. The thrones command the heights of the forge. Within the highest and strongest of the towers, where the glass and smog rises fastest and thickest, you meet the trinity of thrones. The oldest and most terrible, whose body resembles nothing so much as a battered industrial loom, lurches forward to examine your offering. The thrones admire their hulking reflections in the panes of glass. They take them from you. The oldest and most terrible, whose body resembles nothing so much as a battered industrial loom. What a strange creature. Unlocked when you have caprices of the forge. So you need caprices of the forge to make this? Do you need it? You need it to make anything. Huh. Yeah, let's make a scry spinster. As was taught by the regent of the reach to the binary, says the venturer reverently. When the forge's caprice has risen too high, it becomes unruly. The forge will need time to recover after this. You will need to reaccess it later. Hmm. Is it too high? Craft describes spinster. Ooh. Oh, that was a 50-50. Shit. And that ate up my dominions. A tattered wing unfurls like an armistice flag, then hangs limply. Indigo eyes flare as the spinster shrieks. It launches itself at the thrones and begins desperately to catalog them. <laughs> The red ministers set it alight. The sisters of green and gold give you all that remains after the flames are extinguished. A flaw in the imprint. Sorry, spinster. That does not sound... That sounds like a brief and unpleasant existence. Hmm. Do I have the stuff to try again? I need one more hourglass and one more dominion. Oh, shit. It kicked me out of the forge. Damn. Okay, so they really they really make going to the forge and doing stuff hard. You can't just like sit there and just be like, mm, yeah, I'm just going to craft 20 crew members and this and that and that. Like, it's hard. So I need to come back here with a testament of the feather. Plus more of everything that I originally brought, basically, for all the aspects, really. Especially panes of glass, bronze wood, and I think hours. I've got it all on the list, all the things that I can craft. Let me make a note of all that. Okay, got it all in the list. Also, while I was tapping over to my list to write in it, I accidentally clicked the Forge a Companion button. So let's see what this is doing. A willing assistant. You do not express your desire aloud, so the white-robed spirit who appears to float towards you must have caught the movement of your head as you surveyed the forge for a suitable chamber. Their robes appear almost liquid as they ripple through the forge towards a filigreed brass door, warm to the touch. The heat that engulfs you on the other side makes your skin prickle and breath catch. You're inside a tiny chamber, immaculately clean despite the smoke billowing from the furnaces set into one wall. At the center is a stone plinth, bearing a crumpled object six feet in length. Man, that's a disturbing look over there. Like, that's what they're going to look like? What? What am I looking at, even? Um, can I just, like... Can I just, like, leave? I don't think I want to do this, do I? Yes, I can just leave. Um, let's see what it says, though. The crumpled object on the plinth is an empty sack of leathery skin. Ew. Its head is featureless, but for a mouth and two ragged holes where eyes should be. That sounds like an abomination. The spirits... The spirit places four nearly labeled vessels. Nearly? Does that mean neatly? I think it's supposed to say neatly. Neatly labeled vessels beside the skin. Each contains a soul. The one you select will determine what your companion becomes. As you consider your choice, the spirit stares at you. It could be an illusion, 
but their facial features appeared to morph in the flickering light from the furnace. Wow, so I can make a sack of leathery skin that bolsters my heart, smears, veils, or iron. Yeah, let's not. Let's never do that. You leave your companion splayed out on the plinth. Let's head back to Sky Barnet. I think I've been back and forth enough that I'm gonna... Oh, Nameless Spirit must be paid. Offer up another vision of the heavens. There you go, buddy. Yeah, I think I've been back and forth enough that I'm gonna cut this out unless I encounter an enemy. A sealed vault. Oh, hello. Shit. Oh, that's not good. Ooh. That's really not good. Ooh, I'm taking so much damage. And I keep overheating myself too, which is really not good. Please don't hit me, please don't hit me. Whew. Jesus Christ. Loot the engines, plundered hull. Success. Immaculate souls. Oh yeah, there's a cask of Navaratine gems over here I saw. Well, a future cask of Navaratine gems. Oh, look at how the colors change as you move by it. I just noticed that. In the center of it. Eaters of the dead often linger near clusters of Navaratine gemstones. You know, I think I'm going to be going back to the Reach soon, so let's not worry about Terror. Let's search its maw. Jumble of Undistinguished Souls. Hmm, I think we've been inside its maw once before. Description looks familiar. Ooh. Hey! I feel kind of bad for doing that, but it probably would have come after me anyway. Probably. Stony organ. Uncanny specimen. Hmm. Without realizing it, I just went through all my petrichor and my people are about to starve. Um. Whoopsie. What happens again when you starve? Nothing's happened yet. Weirdly enough. Why has nothing happened yet? Well, please continue doing nothing until I get back to port, because then I'll be fine. Ah, oh, starvation. Mm, your crew is starving, hollow faces and wide wolfish eyes. How the cold bites at your narrowed bodies. It's hard as diamond and sharp as a tooth. How can you stop this damned shivering? 
Stoke the engines, burn more fuel until the boiler roars. The pipes thrum in their fixtures, warmth floods of the ship. Your crew are grateful. Yeah, okay, we're fine. Just some minor starvation. I think I have one port report. Yeah, so two gratitude. I really should repair my hole. Oh no, it takes three gratitude for a cryptic benefactor. I was thinking of doing this and then trying my hand at the rental dispute thing, but I can't. Hmm. Should I repair my hole here, or should I risk going back to the Reach? I doubt there's going to be an enemy between Sky Barnet and the Transit Relay. It's a very short distance. And then once I'm there, there won't be any enemies on the way to New Winchester. Yeah, I don't need to repair myself. Alright, let's get back to the Reach. I just want to, like, buy more supplies, get rid of my terror, and heal my ship, and just kind of gather myself again. You have eaten the food of the dead and must discharge your obligations before leaving. Right. How much do I need to do? I think I just have one dining with the dead? Hmm. Not leaving my heart in trust. Let's do a vision of the heavens. I've got 19 of those. Oh no, my dining with the dead was five, now it's three. Mm, cask and Avartine gemstones, sure. That'll do three. And now we're good. The burrower below is watching you. Back at New Winchester, hole repaired, bought a crap ton of supplies. Seriously, I have 13 on me. And then in the bank, I have... Description, go away. In the bank, I have 32. Yeah, that should be more than enough for another trip to the Blue Kingdom. But I don't think I actually want to go back to the Blue Kingdom. I feel like I want to take a bit of a break from the Blue Kingdom because it's been kind of kicking my ass. And there's definitely stuff to do in other places. Not really the Reach, but Eleutheria in particular. I don't, I don't even think I finished exploring all of it. I can actually check right now. I didn't, right? No, there's quite a bit of it unexplored. Yeah, so I want to go back there. Do some more stuff. I've been away too long. Mm, oh yeah, there's something... Still left to do New Winchester, though, I think. Um, because we advanced the quest... Or because we finished the part of the ambition, the Stars Are Dying quest, where the person on board wanted to speak to the Lamentation of Mists and go to that archive where we found out that everybody, all the sons, thousands and thousands and thousands of them, have been noted in the books as dying from... What was it? I forgot the exact word, but it sounded like a ridiculous euphemism. Courtesies? I think they were called courtesies. Exchange of courtesies is how they all died. <coughs> so now that that's done, I think we can probably take him back to the pub and bring someone else. Yes, deposit the didact. He has been silent and distracted on the way back. When you called on him in his cabin, you found that he had borrowed a can of pitch from the engineers and painted his windows black. <laughs> That's probably a smart idea, buddy. As he disembarks, the didact hesitates. I'm afraid this is as far as I'll follow this line of inquiry. There's war in the heavens and the slaughter of sons. And for every one that falls, how many lesser beings suffer? The sons set themselves in positions of indispensability, and now they're disposing of one another. I'm sorry, but I learned some time ago when to let a thing lie. I, I will, of course, help you find our missing Ernest Agitator. I'll focus more directly on that, but my investigations into the affairs of sons is at an end. That's fair. Ooh, 
Oh, you know what? I think we do have some business in the reach. Because we can take the Baroness on board, and with the bathysphere that we had made for them, we can go to Old Tom's Well. The bottom of Old Tom's Well. Right, I wanted to do that forever ago. But I couldn't because I had the Didact on board, and you can only do one of the, the people people's quests at a time. Heck yeah. She oversees your crew as they wrangle the equipment aboard. Her usual flippancy has frayed, and she hurries forward to check every bump or scrape of the bathysphere. Carry the Baroness and her bathysphere to Old Tom's Well. Is the bathysphere an actual item? I don't think so. No. Okay. Well, um, I think I'm going to end the episode here. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to take care of some business by going to the bottom of Old Tom's Well. And then after that, head to Eleutheria.